Today didn't go as planned. I completely smashed my thumb. And that wall could go through the floor. It could cause catastrophic issues. But we're rolling with the punches. It's not about how hard you can hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep on coming. <laughs> and always learning from our mistakes. This is uh, a pretty big mistake, fixing our mistakes. Somebody recommended that we should rename this channel Trent's Mistakes, and that <laughs> is pretty fitting because like, I do make a lot of mistakes. Today is all about looking on the bright side. Popped right into place, did you see that? Anywhere we can find it. Come on, Grayson. <laughs> Not on camera. <laughs> Not on camera, he says. <laughs> back to put the gravel over that back wall, but then we have to like... What's up guys and good morning. We are making moves, baby. We are getting this floor put in. We've got about half of our upper section of floor installed yesterday, and now today we're gonna finish doing that floor. Hopefully we're gonna move some gravel. We might be working on the second floor, might be doing some backfilling. Not exactly sure what we're gonna get to, but we are chomping at the bit, trying to get as much done as possible because we got beautiful weather. Let's get to work. Per usual, I'm just double checking things like when it's too late. <laughs> <laughs> not on camera. <laughs> not on camera, he says. You gotta catch him when he's not expecting it. <laughs> Nothing. Nothing is square. <laughs> you guys know us. If things were square, it would just be out of place. I wouldn't know what to do. Be too easy. Yeah, it wouldn't even be fun. Yeah, it wouldn't be fun. Should be good! Fingers and toes clear? Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Very good. Oh, that'll be much better than climbing back and forth. Yeah. I know a lot of you guys love when we make mistakes. A lot of you guys realize that we're human, we make mistakes, and sometimes we make big mistakes, sometimes we make small mistakes. In fact, I think somebody recommended that we should rename this channel Trent's Mistakes, and that <laughs> is pretty fitting because like, I do make a lot of mistakes. But it's about fixing your mistakes and moving on and you know continuing with progress, and today we realized that we measured off of the wrong spot when we set one of our beams, which means a beam that's supposed to support an entire wall, that's supposed to support an upper floor and the roof and all these other things, has to transfer its load all the way down to a beam, to a post, to a footing in the middle of the floor, and we missed it by about six inches. And the reason that that happened is because I was supposed to pull four foot, 10 inches off of the back wall of the house over, that's where the beam was supposed to land. And when I pulled that, I pulled it off of the outside of the building over here, which is about eight inches further inset than the back of the building. So when we set that beam, everything looked great, looked hunky-dory. Now there's two things that we could do right now. Let me come show you. So this right here is the beam in question. 
and this window right here is going to turn into a doorway, just an open walkway. So you're going to come up those stairs to the landing, and you're going to walk straight through here, and then there's some stairs that go down this direction, and then there's a hallway that goes this direction. Now, we could do two things here. We could just move the wall over about 10 inches, and that would make this wall, this hallway, you know, from four and a half foot hallway to like almost three and a half foot hallway, which is a pretty narrow hallway. Now we could do that and just throw the sheathing on and keep moving and that would be actually relatively quick. Or we can try and install this beam after the fact. We've got two extra pieces of LVL. So we're gonna take those down into the crawl space. We're gonna try and install these LVLs in the proper space, but we've gotta weasel them on top of the green plate here and on top of the beam underneath the floor with all of this floor sheathing already installed. Now, if you've ever framed or installed a floor like this, you realize that's gonna be a very difficult task. We are gonna try and do our best to make that happen because I don't want this hallway to be any smaller. And then if we can get the beam in there, we need to put another six by six post on that footing down there and catch that beam in the middle. So this might be a little bit of a struggle fest. doesn't appear like it's gonna work. Um, there's a couple things that we could try and do here. So a lot of people are probably gonna be asking, isn't this gonna like compromise the structural integrity of this wall and you know, a lot of other concerns like that. And there are a lot of things holding this part of the wall very strong and secure because of the load that's going to be on it. This rim board is one of those things. So since we're having to cut this section of rim board out so that we can slide that beam into place, we're basically gonna have to put that piece of rim board back, nail it, and then we're gonna use some strapping, some metal strapping to go along the top and probably along the face right here. And that will spread that load and make it so that that piece isn't gonna go anywhere independent of the rest of the pieces. And then this piece of strapping right here that ties to the foundation will not only nail into that beam, but it's also gonna nail into the wall right above it, which is a post that holds the header and goes up in the wall. So it's gonna be very strong. This is a, a pretty big mistake, but we're doing our best to fix it and we're trying to keep our heads up. This is a pretty big moment of truth. Um, we're gonna try and stick that beam in there, see if we can slide it over our, our drop beam. Hopefully we can. We were anticipating just throwing these sheets on and moving over to this side, getting the gravel spread, throwing the beam up over here, rolling our joists, trying to get all that done. But now we've shifted to fixing our mistakes. Huh? No, it's like... You can hit that with a hammer. Is this gonna work? It should. What do you mean? First off, I just have to say, it feels amazing down here. <laughs> it's like we built a deck. We built a covered deck back here. <laughs> you can have a nice little shaded space where we could eat lunch and hang out. But uh, I'm really, really stoked on how easy we got that beam in. We've got our treated lumber down on the footing now. It's installed. We've got an extra six by six post that's actually meant for the garage. 
We're not doing the garage today, so we're gonna use this six by six post, get our new post under our new beam, and that will actually rectify the entire issue. So we've, we've fixed our mistake. That could have been catastrophic. The problem is the joists are running laterally like this, and that wall that was like a load-bearing wall is also running laterally. That's the reason that beam has to be there, is to catch the load of that wall. If we just built that wall without like double checking, like if we didn't catch that and we just built the wall in the middle of the sheathing right there, over time, the floor sheeting could just sink and collapse and that wall could go through the floor and it could cause catastrophic issues. So, very happy we caught it. Very happy the beam's in. We're gonna throw this post in and keep moving forward. I'm always so grateful whenever I see Trent doing anything a little bit risky that we are covered with life insurance from Fabric by Gerber Life. And Fabric is the sponsor of today's video. Life used to be so carefree, but as we've gotten older, more and more people depend on us. And so it's important for us to protect our financial future. And it's hard to know exactly how to do that sometimes. But Fabric makes it really easy. Fabric was designed by parents for parents to bring you surprisingly affordable and super high quality term life insurance. And you can actually get covered in less than 10 minutes with coverage options that could be a million dollars in coverage for less than a dollar a day. And there's a 30 day money back guarantee and you can cancel at any time. Trent and I each have a policy with them and you can join us and thousands of other parents who trust Fabric to protect their families by applying today at meetfabric.com slash Trentonally. Thanks again to Fabric for sponsoring today's video. Man, that could have been bad. Lucky boys today. Strongest hallway ever. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> Crisis averted. Extra strong. Yeah, it didn't even take that long to fix. Right. Could have been a lot worse. Yeah. We have a nice flat spot for Dean to hang our HRV or something. Yeah, some Christmas lights or something. Very nice. Thanks. You know, it's not about how hard you can hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep on coming. <laughs> Who said that? Dr. Balboa. Ah, oh, should have guessed. Last piece. Last piece of this floor for today. This floor is essentially done. There is a tiny little hole that a person could fall through if they're not careful, but that's because in order to get this piece of flooring installed, it has to flush up exactly with the flooring on the landing. Now I can do that, but the problem is I have to remove this window, I have to take all the thermal buck off, I have to cut the sheathing, I have to cut all of the jack studs so that I can get them at the perfect height to put this next piece of flooring on so that it flushes right up to the landing. And we are not gonna be doing that today because we don't wanna take off our window yet. So when we do get the window out and we start doing this and building walls and stuff like that, we'll uh, cross that bridge when we get to it, but it's not gonna be today. So essentially the floor is done. Yeah. Good job. Yeah, it's hard work. There's no if and or buts about it. Me, Grayson, and Brandon were all very sore yesterday. We were all exhausted, just trying to get this floor done, and we didn't even get it done until one o'clock today. Granted, we did have to throw in an extra beam, a bonus beam, if you will. Now we know that our wall is gonna have full support and we're not gonna have any uh, 
caving in or sinking of our walls or anything like that. I appreciate that. Yeah, me too. <laughs> so now Grayson's uh, getting some of this stuff cleaned up in here. I'm gonna jump in the excavator, do a little bit of backfilling over here in our patio zone. And then once that's nice and flat, I'll be able to take the skid steer, start picking up gravel and throwing it in here. We'll try and get this area leveled out. Then we're gonna hang the beam in here. We're gonna hang some joists and we'll see how far we get today. Hey. Go hang out all day yeah. now. Yes, you got sawdust already all over yeah, you. That was my oh, that's okay. It's okay. Woohoo! This is pretty exciting because framing has been a little bit rocky, but in just two days, well, two and a half days maybe, we got the entire floor installed on one half of the addition. And it looks like today we're gonna continue with that momentum and keep uh, getting the floor installed on the rest of the addition. Everyone knows what to do. This side is smaller. This side should be easier. Um, it's less complicated. There's only one beam running straight through the middle of it. So Trent's backfilling and then gonna pour some gravel in there. We'll spread it out. <sighs> Things are moving. It's very exciting. I was very anti-excavator and I must apologize. I am, I have to say uh, it's been a huge help. It's made everything go really smooth and really fast. Trent knows what he's doing. He's a great driver. If you're watching this, Trent, you were right. I concede the excavator was a great idea. Spent a little bit of time getting uh, this area backfilled over here. Look at the skid steer. It looks yeah. very majestic just like sitting there on this freshly flattened out pile of dirt. But we used the skid steer, moved a bunch of gravel down here, got it all leveled out. So this is a nice even space now. We got all of our hangers hung except for one. We counted all the hangers yesterday. We needed three more. We went and picked up three more right. and we're one short. So looks like uh, we're either gonna have to get that tomorrow or you know, maybe we've got one lying around. I'm not really sure, but I'm pretty sure we're gonna have to get one tomorrow. But we can get all of the joists except for one installed. We can get the beam installed, the post, all that stuff. So we're gonna get to work. We're gonna hang the first joist so that we know the height of the beam and then we're gonna hang the beam and then get our six by six post attached to the footing. And then we're gonna start rolling these joists, baby.
love How good is it? Per is perfect. Is it? Plum Trent. Plum Trent. Ready for action. Plum Trent. Plum Trent. It's another bright, beautiful day. No rain, nice and dry. We are trying to get the flooring done, the propane tanks moved um, as much as possible because we're actually doing something very important tomorrow that is not at our property. So we have a lot to get wrapped up today. I think these guys are starting with the propane tanks. Now I've got this area leveled out for two propane tanks. This propane tank basically needs to move that way about six feet. And really not even this side. It's really like just this side. So we're going to move it over and then the second tank is going to go next to it. They're not bringing that for another like three weeks or something whenever we're on the schedule. But today we've got to cut this line. We've got to put these splices in here and put in some extra pipe to go from here to where the new section is. And then we've got to dig a little trench and bury our line. And then it'll be ready for them to come and set the new tank and connect it and fill both of them. And we will never have to worry about propane again. <laughs> Excellent. Trent, what do you know? Hone is here. Is tank? No, but they're ready to fill ours if we want it. Talk about unbelievable timing. Good morning. I was gonna at least get a couple hundred gallons in there so you guys didn't. Uh, okay. That way, if it gets cold up here, <laughs> at least you're good. We appreciate that. I heard the last one you were down like two percent. Yep. So I figured I'd. Uh, at least 200, 300 gallons more in there. Yeah. We can still move it with that. Oh, that okay. Way. Yeah, the new truck can look a little It's more. crazy timing. We're in the middle of moving it right now. Oh, okay. Do you have other houses you are filling or are you done? Hit, uh, a couple more down this road. Okay. So Do you want to see anything yeah. before just to make sure it looks good? Check it all out. For yeah. up to your standards, you know? Good morning. What crazy timing, huh? How you doing? Good, how are you? This Do you is... this type of stuff? A little bit. Yeah. <laughs> this, uh, this coupler, the end is like slid on a little bit too far and now it like doesn't want to... <laughs> uh, the ones we have, it have, we have a little chafing tool, mm -hmm. and it just locks right on. Mmm, the professional way. I mean, you don't use the ones from Home Depot. <laughs> One hundred times a day. Yeah. Are you gonna help us supervise? Sure. <laughs> that way, if I need to bring, have my. Uh... I think I bring more parts we know what to Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> the line is cut, everything is capped securely. We've got professional supervision, so you know we're not cutting any corners. We're doing everything safely. Trent is uh, strapping uh, a strap to the propane tank. He's about to lift it with the excavator and set it in its new final resting spot. I'm gonna tell you that nice and slow. Got you. There's only like two rocky spots on our entire property and this is one of them. There's just tons of little boulders. And the other one is over where I'm trying to build that little road next to the tree. There's just so many rocks right there. <laughs> So far so good, but it does take a little bit of finagling because you want the propane tank to be completely level so that when you're using propane, you're, you're using it 
fully, not uh, having pooling on one side of the tank. So we've moved it to where we want it to be. Now we're just trying to finish leveling it in place. And then uh, we're gonna get it filled with a couple hundred gallons to get us through just the next couple weeks until we get our second propane tank up here. And then we'll have both of them filled fully and topped off for the winter. And everything should be set up because everyone is deciding it's gonna be another crazy winter this year with heavy snow, probably an early winter. <sighs> So we're doing our best to try and prepare. It's just a tricky operation. Every time you get one of the footings completely level, then you have to try to get the other footings level on the opposite side of the tank and it slides or it shifts. I completely smashed my thumb trying to move one of the little cinder block footings. I just dropped the cinder block onto my own finger, um, which is fine. But uh, hopefully we can get it in the next few minutes. I know it's hot and the sun is uh, brutal and beating down on everybody. I feel good about that. How's the level? Level too. <laughs> All right, so we made pretty quick work of that. We've got our splice here, which only needed to be about six feet long. And now we can actually start burying this pipe back up, grade this whole section out, make a little uh, aisle way right here next to what will be the deck in the future and start backfilling all of these footings. Our friend from Hone is actually here. He's gonna fill the tank now, so that's gonna be awesome. But uh, basically, we're done, except for a little bit of backfill to keep this pipe covered up. And then we are gonna head over and start working on the floor. Thank you. We're off the building. So far today is just off to an amazing start. The propane is all in place, filled up, mounted permanently, safe. It's been tested. There's no leaks. Everything looks good over there. These guys finished up blocking the TJIs this morning. So they're ready to start putting down sheathing. Um, and I'm not sure if we're gonna finish the entire floor today. We have to call it a day a little earlier than normal, but maybe, maybe we'll see. I love that construction is so serious. And they were just like, you know, let's just have this glue be purple for fun. <laughs> Why not? My guess is that they did not dye it purple like, intentionally. <laughs> they might have. Maybe. Let's have it be Only sparkly. To make it really easy to see. Sparkly and purple. Because like you don't get the warranty unless you use this glue. Mm. So when they come out to do warranty checks, they probably have to make sure they see the purple glue. right into place. Did you see that? Someone knows what he's doing around here. Well, pretty good at pretending. Well guys, it is the end of the night. We are finally wrapping things up and getting ready for bed, but we just wanted to say 
Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, we did We it. are very, very <laughs> excited. We got our floor completely finished. We got our propane tank moved and filled up. And now we've kind of, I think that the space is ready for the second one. I yeah. might have to do more work. I don't really know. And also, we have an extra, extra strong floor because I had to put in the beam that I forgot. So we double beamed our floor and it is going to be bulletproof, baby. Bulletproof and fast. I feel like if that's how fast we're going to be framing, this is going to go up in like a week. Yeah, I think as we go upwards, things get more complicated. Okay. Um, because that was fast. We'll see. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, the floor went really fast. If we can just start knocking out walls, uh, it's going to get complicated once we have to start cutting parts of the house off and attaching to the house and removing the roof and yeah. all that stuff. I'm not excited for it, but I'm excited to get it done. I'm also very excited that my thumb is totally fine. It's a little bloody, but uh, it's not broken, which <laughs> is all that I care about. So Yeah, we're glad that Allie's thumb is okay. <laughs> But anyways, if you guys enjoyed coming along on this adventure and watching this video today, make sure you show us by giving us a big thumbs up on today's video. Consider subscribing to our channel if you haven't already. Thanks again to Fabric for sponsoring today's video. Click the link in our description to check them out. And we'll see you guys on the next Adios. one. Adios!